Hello and welcome back to the Impact Lounge. Uh, this is your weekly Impact Review. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro. Good afternoon this time, I think, to you, is it? Yes, indeed. Good afternoon, Adam. Or evening, if you're wondering, is it out there? <laughs> I was going to say, if you're wondering why uh, yeah, we don't know what time it is, is uh, that we record these usually on the weekend. And uh, Ro, I think, is about eight hours behind me. Uh, on the clock so uh, we never quite know where, where we're talking to each other or when so anyway welcome back to to another impact review um, if it's the first time stopping by the show then make sure that you do hit that subscribe button and uh, if you enjoy the show hit the like if you dislike it you know what to do as well uh, and the other thing is is always make sure that if you like something on the show and you want us to talk about it on a future one uh, any angles or anything like that then please do make sure that you uh, drop a comment uh, in the comment section Right. Um, we usually also do a few shout outs to fellow podcasters and impact fans out there. I think uh, Rose got a list of those he's going to go through today. Yes. Uh, be sure to check out the six sided podcast. They can be found on SoundCloud. Um, they do an excellent job covering impact as well. And then also don't forget on Facebook, we have the impact fan zone as well as Adam. What's the, the impact lounges on Facebook is too, too, right? That's right. Yep. Just the impact lounge. Uh, just look at that. You'll recognize the logo from this video. Yeah. So you should be able to find it all on Facebook. Uh, yeah. So make sure you check us out in lots of different ways because, you know, sometimes life catches up with, with us and also BQ uploads these videos and we don't always get content up straight away on the YouTube channel. So make sure you do check out Facebook because we are always posting up stories on those sites as well, even if we don't get the time to, to upload on, uh, daily on, on the channel. Although we do hope soon that we are going to have daily content going up, including, you know, breaking news and um, our very own show, Row. Um, the Throwback Lounge, where we talk about uh, various things that have happened over the years in both TNA and Impact. Talking of which, we've recorded a few of those. Make sure you do check them out when they do get loaded up. Right. Um, so before we dive into the show, as always, I, I do ask Ro for his general overall feel of uh, what happened and whether he enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought, you know, coming, you know, from the excellent pay-per-view that we got this past Sunday, uh, this is a great follow-up. It seemed fresh, and we got some new storylines and some angles, so it was nicely done. One thing I should also point out is when we did our last Impact review, although we didn't do one last week because it was so, it would have been posted after the pay-per-view. It didn't make much sense. But usually when we talk about these things, you know, we do give our predictions. And it was great to see that I think I got every prediction wrong. So there you go. If you ever do uh, bet on pro wrestling, just make sure you listen to this podcast and you know which way not to go uh, for your bets. So there you go. Um, anyway, yeah, I agree with you. I thought this week's show was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I think some gr interesting stuff stuff coming out of impact as it has been for quite some time now and one of the things that i'm delighted by although i enjoyed the team of sanjay and josh matthews is don Callis on um on commentary i i think he's awesome yeah they they complement each other well i honestly think you know as they move forward it might help josh i mean i know everyone's opinion on josh is di it differs depending who you ask but i really think Callis can help elevate Josh Matthews some and don't get me wrong I did enjoy Sanjay I thought they were cool they were building chemistry but if Callis is going to be the Cullen commentator for the foreseeable future I'm all on board I, I personally think that he's the best commentator we've had since Don West you know I'm a big Don West fan uh, and he reminds me to some extent of, of what Don West does as well so yeah all good stuff as far as I'm concerned so let's uh, move into the show. And I'm going to be honest here uh, to our regular listeners. I always, if I haven't seen a segment, I always admit it. And my DVR that I record uh, Impact on missed out the opening five minutes last night. So I didn't actually see the Austin Aries talking to the number of Impact wrestlers backstage. So do you want to maybe pick this one up, Ro? Sure. So mainly we get Austin Aries. He comes out and he's addressing the Impact roster. And pretty much he's putting over that he's still the grand champion and that this is the this is the title you know this is the a world title or in other words he's making it seem like the title that he's carrying is the most important and he was just talking about how he faced two guys and he just starts rambling and everyone starts to leave so 
I mean, one would assume that maybe they're going into a hill turn with Austin Aries, which, you know, seems so sudden. But I mean, hey, you know, I'm interested to see where it goes. But I did find it to be interest, interesting to see, you know, as far as him, you know, being recognized as still grand champion, because out of all the belts that we got, you know, new belt, new belt designs that we got at the pay-per-view, the grand championship was the only one that remained the same. So, you know, I was assuming, I'm sure like many that they were doing away with it, but it seems like it's here to stay for the time being. Yeah. Re reading the spoilers, not the spoilers, but reading the results of the show, I should say, uh, we we're not going to have any spoilers if anyone's worried about, uh, obviously the tapings have happened, but yeah, reading, reading the, the results, it did seem to me that the, the way that the segment came over is that Austin Aries is getting a bit arrogant in the locker room and, um, maybe they're going to be, as you say, playing on that to, to slowly turn him heel, but he's always been like that anyway. So it just seems odd that they're now starting to play it up a little bit more, but anyway, um, yeah, so we then kicked, where my recording kicked in, it was uh, Brian Cage versus Trevor Lee. Now, did they give any explanation why this match was set up at all? Uh, because obviously, as I said, I, it dove straight into it for me. They didn't really give any explanation outside of um, at the pay-per-view when uh, Trevor Lee in the six-man match, uh, Lucha Rules, he uh, went after Brian Cage, just started going after him while before Cage could legally enter into the match. So I think it was stemming from that. Well, the one thing I'd say, what I, what I was really, really pleased with, although there was a little bit of interference, not that much, uh, although there was a little bit, Trevor Lee actually held his own, which I was quite surprised because obviously he's always been packaged as an X Division wrestler, you know, someone who's a bit smaller and you know, needs to cheat to win, that kind of stuff. But uh, he pulled off some moves, including a, a fisherman suplex in the middle of the match, which I was like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. So um, I was actually really pleased with, with, with the showing that Trevor Lee got. And I think it was the right decision that they, they gave it to, to Brian Cage, maybe keep that streak going. Um, I wouldn't have minded if Trevor Lee had won due to interference, you know, because I don't think he should be beating Cage clean. But overall, I thought it was a good match, a good competitive stuff with some uh, nice spots in there. I think we're starting to see a layout with some of these Brian Cage matches where as dominant and he, as he is, these guys that he's facing, they're getting enough offense in. I guess was exception to the match he had with KM, but a majority of these guys he's facing, they're getting enough offense in where it's somewhat believable. Like in this match, you know, while Trevor Lee was tossed around a bit, I think that spot where Trevor Lee was able to hit that German suplex, that was a big deal. I mean, there was mm -hmm. never a doubt in my mind that Cage was going to not win this match, but I think that's going to bode well for him moving forward because as fans, the one thing we want to see, you know, we don't care if he's going to win, but we just don't want him to be running through the X Division guys. So I think matches like this that, you know, give the X Division guys an opportunity to, you know, get their stuff in and make it seem like they do have, a, you know, a 50-50 shot of winning the match. I think that bodes well. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing I'd like to see change, and I don't know, I mean, you talked quite a bit about him being like Goldberg, or not being like being Goldberg, but being booked like Goldberg, where, you know, he goes on a long and defeated run. The only thing I'd like to see about him is maybe get a bit more of his character, because at the moment, we're not seeing that at all. Other than a little segment backstage where he was in the rafters eating some food and Bobby Lashley approached him. I can't remember anything else where we've seen him talk. Um, maybe you might correct me. Maybe the listeners will correct me. But I'd like to see a bit more personality coming out of him. And I and I don't know how. Um, and I know he's packaged up as a machine and these kind of things. But I do think at some point we're going to have to get either some motivation for him or, or, or just something that's going to grab the viewer other than just the fact that he looks like an, a monster. I, I worry with him, though, at, just at this time. I worry with him they might try to place him in the X Division. Like, even his inclusion in the match that they had at Redemption, you know, it seemed out of place. I mean, it ended up going well, but I think somebody like him, until you're ready to pull the trigger on him in the main event, the mid-card. And, I mean, I know the mid-card right now is just in shambles because they don't know what they want to do as regarding the grand championship or if they want to bring in a new mid card, but that would be the division I would start him up in and then, you know, elevate him along the way. But I kind of worry that for, for the time being, I could, he might be challenging for the X division title down the road. Yeah. Uh, well, 
I'm not sure. I think he will be t- challenging for the X division. And I know we talked about it before that it's seen as a cruiserweight belt. But I do think that if they are going to keep a secondary belt other than the X division, then he would be the ideal guy to do it. Because, you know, I- I've said this plenty of times before that a secondary belt doesn't mean that you're a secondary wrestler. And it- it's the wrestler that makes the belt. And at the moment, they haven't had a wrestler to make the global championship. Now, to some extent, Moose did, maybe Eddie Edwards, you know, had a good run with it. But, you know, there's no one has really stamped their mark in it. Not in the same way that, you know, Ravishing Rick Rude did, you know, in, in WCW or or the Ultimate Warrior did with the Intercontinental or even Macho Man Randy Savage. You know, they all had all Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, these kind of guys. They didn't need the top belt to be you know, someone who you want to tune in to see each week. Even the honky tonk man, for, for goodness sake, he was the longest ever reigning intercontinental champion. You know, so I, I think they need to do something with this guy. And I, I would like to see the global championship on him. And what that will do as well for me is then the he grand have, championship. I'm sorry. The grand, yeah, sorry, the grand championship. You're right. Um, I keep, they're so close those two titles i think sometimes <laughs> they even confuse themselves when they're promoing but you know first of all it, it highlights the belt it also gives him a way that he can get wrestlers coming in each week if he defends it every week on, on the telly he doesn't need to cut a good promo he just you know here's the open challenge for, for, the, for the title tonight and if you're intent on putting him on a long winning streak then the roster isn't big enough for doing something like that the wcw roster was massive when goldberg went through it this roster isn't big enough. So I think it's a perfect way to get, you know, wrestlers coming in from other promotions uh, to feature them on the show to build up partnerships, but at the same time to be able to give them an interesting undefeated streak, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, totally. I totally agree. But yeah, it just seems like it for the time, for the time being. But like I've always said in the past, it's all commitment. And, you know, once they started committing to the X Division again, we see now the X Division, you know, is capturing some of that magic that it had years ago. So the same thing applies to a mid card belt. You know, we've seen when Moose had it or even when Galloway was still around and he was champ, you know, there was a commitment to it. So, you know, we, we just have to wait and see how things uh, plan out. But, you know, for the time being, you know, having Aries have the belt and, you know, still being recognized by it. I think that's the perfect person that you could, if you really wanted to um, revamp the division, the mid card division, you could do do it with him. You know, and he's a main main event guy, so why not just you know roll with him? But we just have to wait and see. Well, the good thing is, if you did put a mid card belt on him and you put it on him for six months, it keeps him out of the main event. If that makes sense, which is good, you know, from from the top title, and, and it lets you know some of the guys who have been there longer, you know, your your mooses, your real eyes, etc., to to challenge for it. Because you know, I think that if if you put him in there at the moment, there's only two things that you can do: either get beaten and move back down the card, which doesn't fit with his machine gimmick, or you put the belt on him. And if he's not a great talker at the moment, or he's still new to it, it doesn't fit. So I, I think a mid card belt for you know a good six month reign would do him and the mid card the world of good it would absolutely do him the world of good and yeah we'll see what happens you know he's doing well but i would like to see maybe i i would even be opposed to you know he gets a, a mouthpiece for him you know uh someone uh, maybe not jimmy jacobs because he doesn't really fit him well i suppose you could have the monster and the machine <laughs> being represented by, by jimmy jacobs but yeah i'd like to get maybe a mouthpiece for him uh but yeah we'll see we'll see anyway Moving on, uh, we went backstage where Eddie Edwards was arriving, heading into the building uh, to be stopped by Tommy Dreamer. Now, I've got to say, um, I really liked all of the Eddie Edwards stuff this week. Uh, some of it made me laugh for the wrong reasons. Some of it was very good. Uh, and I just really quite enjoyed this segment. You know, it's just amazing, you know, the the mileage they've been able to pull out of this this whole angle when you think about where it started from and now we just see just more layers and layers to it i mean it's it's one of the best things that impact has going on by far yeah yeah, absolutely so um we'll come back onto that i'm sure oh no actually um he comes out next to the ring as well uh so he says that basically if ov don't come out he's going to go to dayton uh ohio and uh, go beat up their wives put them in uh, ICU, which uh, I I like this heel turn from Eddie because the one thing I've always said about Eddie, there's no doubt he's a good wrestler, 
but he is bland. And this is the first time I've really seen something interesting in him. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really a fan of this. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, you know, the feud, man, it's it's one of those, bl- you could, I know it's probably been used a lot, but it's one of those blood feuds. And like I said, they just keep progressing, progressing, having uh, Callahan <laughs> roll up into Alicia's room. And I thought he was going to pop the balloon, but he had just cut it. And he's just talking about, we need to talk or I, I forgot what exactly what he said and you know to have Eddie and then you know to to go back and then to have him <laughs> attacking Callahan on the hospital bed I mean some amazing stuff well this is the one of the things that I found funny was you know just the fact that he rolled in with two balloons in front of him with a pair of scissors I mean it was ridiculous but it was funny um and it kind of worked uh the, the only thing I don't like about the whole segment in this part of it was how OVE are still being booked. These are guys, you know, as, as, as losers, you know, as jobbers almost, you know, they're getting beaten up by one guy. Now, fair enough, he's, he's on a mission, he's trying to hurt them. Yeah. But these were guys who were tag champs for quite some time. And at the moment, they can't seem to get a win. You know, they're just also Rams, aren't they? It's all about Sammy Callahan, as we thought it might be. They, you know what, in the past couple of weeks, and even when you think about the pay-per-view, it looks like they're putting... Um, some emphasis on them as like they're still a credible tag team hell you know they're former tag team champions I think what happened was you know when after they lost the belt and Callahan really kind of came onto the scene you know a lot of the focus was on Callahan but it looks like because even even in this when you know when you had him uh, OVE come out and attack Eddie Edwards and even though Eddie Edwards was you know, getting the better, better of them, you know, I mean, it wasn't like he beat them in a two on one or anything like that. So I think moving forward, they'll be fine. You know, it was just for the time being, they were playing in the background since the big uh, angle was or big feud was between Callahan and Eddie Edwards. I also thought the makeup, by the way, on uh, Callahan was very good. It looked convincing, like he really was bloodied and battered. Maybe it wasn't makeup, but if it was, it was very good. Right, okay, so we then went on to a highlight package of uh, Pentagon being uh, pinned by Austin Aries for the title. Uh, that's not right. I'm reading these and it's not right. Where Pentagon pinned Austin Aries for the title. Sorry, I apologise about that, listeners. Um, yeah, so we had a bit of a recap for that. And then we talked, we went straight into Eli Drake, Scott Steiner, Um saying that they're going to be challenging for the Impact World titles against LAX. Then we went to the GWN flashback. So what did you make of this? Because it annoyed me having this in there. Uh, For all the reasons that we talk about every week, that the crowd always looks super hot, and it just kind of shows you a bit of how far Impact has fallen. I know we're getting back there and we enjoy the show, but from a crowd perspective. Um, I think they fell back into old habits not you know having the full match i think that's what takes some of us out of it what they did i want to say was it last week or a couple impacts ago where they had the jade rosemary one where it was short that was perfect if you're going to show a flash because it looks like what they're trying to do is trying to find high points and not saying that anyone's at low points right now but find like you know pivotal matches of people who are currently on the roster and this one obviously showcased scott steiner so i think that was the key thing which i would have had no problem had they cut it short i mean to give it don't give us the full match maybe what you do you show pieces of the match and then you could advertise hey if you want to see the full match be sure to check it out on the gwn app that way you're promoting the app because once again if I'm if I could see the whole match on Impact, what incentive do I have to go and watch it on the GWN app? Absolutely, and can I just say it was a good match, by the way, for, especially for four guys who weren't exactly in their prime at the time. I know Buddy Ray got back into shape. The one funny thing that happened to me, by the way, when I was watching this, because I I kind of glanced away when it's I always kind of glance away when the GWN thing comes on, uh, or fast forward through it. I had to stop it because I thought it was Mick Foley. <laughs> just the way, just the way that uh, Brother Way Ray was uh, dressed in his, uh, you know, lumberjack shirt with the sleeves cut off, and the size of him, I actually thought it was uh, Mick Foley. But there you go. Right. Um, then we moved on to DJ Z talking about his intro, and I thought this was a fantastic package. Even my wife uh, stopped doing whatever she was doing and looked up and uh, looked at the telly and and said, "Is this for real? Did he really do that?" And I was like, "Yep, yeah, this, this is real." 
she did comment earlier on when when Sammy Callahan was in the hospital. She goes, "This looks so fake," but 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 with the DJ Z bit, she did say, "Is this real?" Uh, I thought it was very well done. Um, yeah, I'm happy to have him back. Um, I like to see what they do with him. I know. I want to say it was when they were in Noah. He was tagging with uh, Andrew Everett. Maybe that's something that they can recreate an impact because you know it gives us another tag team and i think putting those two guys together um <laughs> will produce some excellent matches yeah i like uh, djz i i think he's progressed well you know because obviously he started off as um uh what's his name it was his full name was it, it wasn't djz it was uh, Zima oh, Ion or something like Z that. Zima Ion. That's right. Where he had the big afro and he and he had um, he had a strange outfit he used to wear, which was like one long leg and one short leg on his trousers. And uh, he was involved in the X division and, and he used to also spray hairspray. That was his. It was a bit like arrogance, you know, from uh, the, the Ricky the model Martel uh, back in the day. He used to have hairspray. He used to spray people's eyes all the time. But uh, he's progressed well. You know, he went to the bromance and and I think he really got into the DJ Z character and now he's made it his own with his light up suit and yeah fair play to him I, I like having him around and i think he'll be a you know a good addition to the x division especially if uh cult of lee remain as a tag team so uh good to have him back now braxton sutter versus moose okay so sutter got on the mic and said i've got something to say why are they suddenly giving him the mic in the last six weeks and then he leaves it's such a shame he's been on the roster for two years maybe even longer and they've finally given him something to do and he's showing some really good chops on the on the, on the mic as well i think he's been excellent and then he decides to leave can, can, can you get your head around it well i mean i can understand and you know without diving too much into it because i'm sure bq because this is one of bq's favorite wrestlers i know he's going to probably drop a video or share some some thoughts on it you know when he you know gets to it but it's just mind boggling to me because this is a here's a guy who, you know, was on the roster for the past two years. They couldn't find anything for him to do. And I think that's just what's baffling to me because you think about we're always, you know, week in and week out talking about how we need tag teams or, you know, maybe revamping the mid card. He could you could have easily plugged him in there. And to say they had nothing for him when you see a guy like Tyrus who comes back, gets an angle and then leaves and then trashes the company or others, you know, who we've seen and just stayed for a short time. You know, that could have been time that you could have used for Sutter or hell. I'd even say nothing against Scott Steiner, but could have had Braxton Sutter tagging with Eli Drake. Could you imagine how much that would have elevated Braxton Sutter to be tagging with a former Impact World Champion and winning the belt with him? I felt like there was a place for him. And to see them, see him, like, I, I, I kind of believe maybe he had asked for a release or the contract was up. I mean, I can't blame the guy. The guy was there, you know, patiently waiting for his opportunity. They finally find something to do with him, albeit it, uh, comedy and whatnot. And, you know, you just fight, you know, you figure you want to roll the dice and see, you know, what you can do elsewhere. I'm hoping, I wish the best for him, but I'm hoping that maybe down the road, you know, management realizes, hey, we can find something with him and he comes back on board because I feel like there's a place for him in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think he's been very entertained in the last couple of months and it's a shame that we're, he's now been released and uh, I take it he asked for the release as opposed to being released. So, uh, yeah, all the best to him and let's hope he does come back because he, you know, he does have something to offer. Um, yeah, so anyway, back to the match of Moose versus Sutter. What What did you make of it? Um, I mean, just a way to showcase Moose. It was kind of an extended squash. I mean, I don't recall Sutter getting too much, too much in, you know, and it, you know, with the news breaking, because I want to say it broke earlier this week. And then to see this match, it kind of, it seemed right on schedule. Yeah, yeah. So as you said, it, it was, it was all about Moose and uh, he won with the spear. Uh, that was that his finisher before. I can't remember. I don't yes. think it was, was it? it was, he, I know he had the discus uh, clothesline, didn't he? But I couldn't remember if he also had the spear. But yeah, he obviously finished up with the spear there. Yeah, he um when he was in uh, Ring of Honor, that was his finisher. And then when he came on board to Impact, I mean, he would use it at times. But when Lashley was on board, you know, obviously that was Lashley's move. But I figured, I said, once Lashley departs, I, I could see Moose using the spear as a finisher moving forward. 
And there you go. You got your way. Uh, just talking of which, sorry, I forgot to mention it during the, the Brian Cage match because we talked about him quite a lot. I do like the way that he just seems to be coming out with different moves every week. Uh, I really like that. I think it's a, it's a really good idea to give him something where you don't know how he's going to finish the match. So that, that was that was quite enjoyable. Right. OK, so we then went Mackenzie Mitchell with uh, Matt Seidel. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if this was really a spot to try and showcase Matt Seidel or whether it was more to do with the guy knocked out backstage with the red X on him. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think this is? And have you got any ideas who it's going to be? Yeah, I found this confusing because it on one end, it looks like they were just trying to present Seidel's um, new full committed heel character or persona, I want to say. And then they go to that. So I didn't really understand what they were trying to do. It seemed like they were trying to kill two birds with one stone. But, yeah, I, I mean, I don't have the slightest idea. If you ask me, we're going to get some kind of debut. That's the only thing I could think of. The strange thing about it in the way that they've premiered this is that, obviously, Seidel's now a heel. And if someone's going around backstage leaving messages and knocking people out, that's a heelish thing to do. And I, I never really like heel versus heel matches because, you know, I feel like you've got to, you know, have a face taken off and transition it, you know, face heel, face heel. But it looks like, you know, uh, that whoever it is is going to be targeting the X Division unless the X means something completely different. Maybe it's Desmond Xavier. Who knows? Right. OK, so then we went to LAX's lair. We love the clubhouse, don't we? Uh, so, yeah, Ortiz and Santana. I thought this was really good, actually, um, because we've often complained that Conan does all the talking for them. And uh, it was good to see these two guys get some mic time and show a bit of character, because I've said it time and time again. I think these guys are, are absolute money. They're genuinely, I think, one of the best tag teams out there at the moment. You know, people talk about the Young Bucks. People talk about some of the, you know, the guys in, in WWE uh, and some of the other places. But these guys, I think, for me, are the best tag team out there. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. I mean, I don't know where they're going with LAX. I mean, a part of me, I thought maybe they might decide to split them up for a little bit, which might hurt. Or no, I'm not going to say might. It would hurt, you know, not only them, but the tag division as a whole. But they really got to find something for these guys to do because we kind of see it's a cycle. You know, they're chasing the belts, which is fine. But if they do come up short, then what's next? Or, you know, they win them, then what? it's just kind of just a... A cycle but i do like that they keep mentioning this person king so that just leads me to believe that we're going to get some new character introduced whether they're going to be a part of lax or that's somebody who they're going to be feuding with so i want them adding that uh, adds some intrigue to lax do we know what's happened to Coden? by the way is, has he left the, the company or is he just off at the moment is there any news on this do, do we know anything no, um, to my knowledge, I think he's still on board. I want to say this is just an angle kind of to give them something more to do because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I had voiced that I thought LAX was becoming stale, you know, because they've run through everyone and it's not their fault, but they've run through the whole tag team division. So them not being champions right now and, you know, you're having um, them wonder about Conan's whereabouts and we keep hearing about this king, it gives them something to do without – having revolving around the tag team titles or chasing the tag team titles right okay uh let's move on so then we had um ali coming out to face tyre valkar i could never say it Ty, let's just say tyre uh so yeah they they had uh, a good match here another good match the only thing that i'm a little bit worried about is that they seem to have cooled on tyre already uh and i don't understand i know they've got some knockouts coming in and these kind of things and but tyre you know she's has she won a match recently? I can't remember. You know, since she lost to Rosemary, didn't she, the other night? I'm just trying to think. Um, did she lose the match to Rosemary? Yes, and then she got the win at the pay-per-view. And I, I agree with you. And I had said on um, the uh, – I forgot where I said it. Oh, I apologize. But I worry that she's going to get lost in the shuffle because we got at Redemption the debut of Tessa Blanchard. And I'd assume that she's going to be – heavily featured but what they got to do because we kind of see this problem every time we get a debut you kind of have the, your roster intact this person comes in comes in front of the line you put the belt on them or whatever and then there's nowhere for them to work with you got to be able to build up credible challengers 
I think in Taya's case, she's somebody, and this was a title match, so I mean, I guess, you know, she did get her a title shot, but I, like, you know, she's a big deal. I, I, I want to say, you know, having the division where, you, you know, revolving around Ali, Taya, Tessa, um, Sienna, when she comes back, those four, those are the ones where while they're still trying to build Kira and maybe Alicia, like those four, you want to keep them strong so that they have there's credible challengers when they have title matches. I think this match, it was too short. In, in, it was short. Yeah, yeah it was very and, short. And, you know, for me, it just, it just seemed like it kind of, and maybe I don't want to come across as overacting, but like Taya, you know, has become an afterthought. And I'm all looking, I'm all like, don't tell me that, you know, she's been released or she asked for her release. Because you see a match like this, and then if that were to come out right after seeing his match, I mean, it would make sense. But hopefully that's not the case, because I think she has a lot to offer to the Nakas division. Well, one thing I noticed, as I say, it was a short match, but it was just the fact that it was a title match and it finished so quickly. You know, it, was, it wasn't a, a finish out of nowhere, but at the same time, it was one super kick and the pin, wasn't it? Uh, so it, it just seemed to finish quickly. And the fact that Johnny Impact, uh, you know, obviously he's been missing for a couple of weeks now. Uh, you just think, are the two of them back off? You know, they're going to go back to Lucha Underground. Maybe maybe that's a, that's a problem at the moment. That Lucha Underground is saying to the to, to Impact, look, you can keep this, the guys on there, but you know you can't have them at the next set of tapings because we're going to have to use them for our block of tapings coming up. And that that's where the pro you know the, the problem comes in. Unlike someone like Sue Young, who is obviously just with Impact and not on. Um, well, I'm guessing she's not on Ring of Honor or Lucha. Unless, uh, unless you correct me, I don't watch those shows. So, um, Benio, what did you think of the post-match segment? Um, I mean, I thought it was great in the sense of now it looks like the feud's going to continue because I thought at Redemption, that the way that that ended, which I didn't know which way they were going to go because I kind of felt like, well, it's too early to put the Knockouts Championship on Sue Young. But, you know, you have Ali run through her, then what's next? So it, it, I think that's great. But then once again, you know, then we get, rosemary to come to the aid of ally so i mean you know maybe we're going to get a triple threat which i think would be excellent but what they just have to do is you know find a, a place for all these knockouts and commit some kind of time to them because like i said it doesn't matter who's champion but you got to have credible challengers and stuff so i mean we, we just got to see how it plan plays out but i like that the feud is continuing is giving ally uh more to do instead of just moving on to somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I, as I said, I, I, I do like uh, the, the, the female division. I think it's fantastic and it's stacked and you just got to find something for these guys to do outside of the belt. And, and the good thing is they've done that quite well with Rosemary and Tyre up to now. And it looks like you know, that's going to continue with Rosemary and Sue Young, maybe not for the belt or, as you say, possibly a triple threat. Uh, it's the same problem at times that they had with Sienna is that it almost became the title, who was the title holder, was unimportant because it was all about the, the supporting characters with Gail Kim at the time. But anyway, um, yeah, next up, two of my favourite guys on the on the roster, KM, uh, apologises to Falabar for shaming. No, no, no. Uh, what do you think of this? I mean, it was fine, but it just, it, if I can go back to the Braxton subject, like I said, they've been able to find a spot for KM and even Falabar. So, like I said, I mean, I don't know you know, if maybe backstage, you know, there's obviously there's certain people you're going to be higher on than others. But the one thing that Impact has that, and maybe it's just because it's going to come across as biased since I only follow Impact, you know, they have something where folks are given an opportunity. You know, you can really, you know, there's a place for everyone, I want to say. And that's why it just kind of just bothers me some about Braxton. But going back to this, um, I'm interested to see what they do if this is going to be a, dare I say, makeshift tag team, or maybe, you know, we get KM kind of just <laughs> trying to lead follow ball on, and then, you know, we get a small feud with him. But giving both these guys something to do, I'm all on board. Absolutely, and, and the good thing about these two is that obviously Falabar is a, is a fan favourite in the in the crowd, and uh, KM I, I like him as well. He's got a good defined character. He's good on the stick, you know. So yeah, I, I'm all for this, and you know these these guys are fine entertaining. And as you said, we talk about it all the time. You know, sometimes people get lost in the shuffle of the middle, and and at least these two guys are doing something with it, and it's great. I'm actually glad that that uh, Brodus Clay's gone. 
Did I say Brodus Clay Tyrus? I mean, <laughs> I yeah, he, was he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't needed. And you know, if anything, and I don't know why, and and not to crap on the guy, but you know, it was just a prime example. I think he thought he was bigger than what he really was. You know, coming from where he came from, he thought he had that cachet that automatically put him in the main event, and he just never came across that in Impact. You know, I had always thought, you know, and this is stemming back from when Aiden O'Shea was with the company, I thought you put those guys together as the fixers because they had some little um, uh, commercials that they used to do. And I thought, you know, they were destined to be tag team, and I thought that would have been fine. But, yeah, there was no need for him. I feel like guys like him are taking away spots from, you know, guys like Cam and Fala Bar, or hell, even to a lesser extent, Richard Justice. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love me some Richard Justice as well. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, let, let's know what you think, by the way, guys. Um, if you're listening out there, just uh, just drop us a note on, on your opinions of Cam and Fala Bar because, you know, I, I, I know this has been a fat shaming angle and it's not exactly the most tantalizing storyline, but at least they've got something. Where do you think these guys can go? Do you think they can be anything more than just uh, a comedy relief? Do you think they can be a tag team? Do you even think they could go onto something bigger? Uh, you know, I, I think that KM has got the opportunities a bit because he's got the size. I, I, I think he's too, you know, he was getting serious when he was in America's top team, but that's been forgotten about completely now. But he seems like a good character. Now, let us know what you think. Do you think either of these guys can ever win any gold? And if so, what what kind? Right, on to my favourite bit of the night. Um Sammy, uh, sorry, Eddie Edwards attacking Sammy Callahan in hospital. I, I just found this uh, hilarious. Uh, it was just the look on Sammy Callahan's face as Eddie Edwards just flew across the screen and attacked him. Um, it, it was ridiculous but brilliant at the same time. And I, I don't know what I was supposed to be feeling, whether I was supposed to be feeling the anger or, or, or whatever. But to me, I just found the whole thing funny which I know that's not what the intention was. All that was missing was for Sammy Callahan to hit Eddie Edwards with a bedpan, uh, like Stone Cold did back to Vince McMahon in the day. Uh, that was the only thing missing for this segment for me. But it, it's it, the feud has been brilliant and it's been carried on great. But this, this one missed for me just from trying to keep it serious. This was too funny. In, it just shows you that not everything has to be surrounded by a championship. You know, this is a feud that they've been able to extend and it's just of all stemming from the accident. So, you know, kudos to Impact for carrying on. And I mean, I'm really interested to see what's going to be the big blow off match to, to uh, this Edwards and Callahan feud. Yeah. yeah, and also where the characters are going to be left at the end of it, because obviously they're turning Eddie heel in, in all of this, or certainly he's, he's losing his mind over it. So do they, when they finally part ways, are they both heel? Or, or could we even see Eddie Edwards join Sammy Callahan in some way? I don't know. Uh, it would be interesting, but I think they've done a, an outstanding job. Right. Um, OK, so then we had a recap, which usually you do at the end of our show, but we had a recap mid-show uh, about what was coming up the following week. So it does look like a stacked card coming up uh, with, uh, obviously, Rosemary versus Sue Young, uh, Aerostar, Drago, Phantasma, DJ Z, Desmond Xavier, Andrew Everett. So we're talking about DJ Z and Andrew Everett. They're in a tag match next week uh, against uh, some of the other X Division stars. So... Uh, we then got a recap of Johnny Impact and Connie, Con Connie Congo, Congo Kong even. I don't, I'm really not with it tonight, am I? Um, it was fine. I, I don't think it felt like filler to me, uh, unless you, unless I missed something. Was there anything you wanted to add? Um, I think this was just a way to sh kind of explain why Johnny Impact wasn't on uh, Impact this week, or had, let alone at the pay-per-view, just selling the uh, injury that he sustained when Congo Khan kind of darted Johnny Impact into the steel step. I, th I think it's one good thing that they have been doing, even when guys aren't appearing wrestling on a show or or even, you know, in a segment, they are keeping us up to date, you know, and reminding us that these guys exist outside of the two hours that are on TV. So fair play. All right. Uh, we moved on to this main event then. And, uh, you know, I wanted to spend a bit more time on this tonight because, as you know, I'm a huge Eli Drake fan, huge LAX fan. And I did think that Scott Steiner was going to be able to go in the pay-per-view or on. Well, I did think he was going to stick around. And I thought 
this was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed, first of all, the segment before uh, where Steiner got on the mic and just the way that Eli Drake said, I've got nothing to add. <laughs> I, th- I thought it was a great promo. So give us your thoughts on the promo before we look at the match. Um, it was funny. I think the only thing that was kind of uh, outdated, but I guess with Steiner, you know, they kind of roll with, you know, he's old and senile was, you know, Conan not showing up because he, yeah, Taco Bell. And it's just kind of like, you know, if you're somebody that, you know, eats a lot of Mexican food, you're not uh, authentic Mexican food. You're not going to Taco Bell for no authentic Mexican food. So I, I just found that to be silly. But, you know, um, I've been impressed with Steiner because my fear with the even going into the pay-per-view, you know, in you know, thinking if they decide to put the titles on Eli and Steiner, that what can he do? And we've seen, you know, before we get into this match, we've seen now that he can do enough. It's passable. It's not a situation where where uh, Eli's going to be doing double duty. Like Steiner can carry his own. And I mean, as we get into the match, he did some stuff. I was just thoroughly surprised at his age that he's still uh, capable of doing. Absolutely. You know, he, he, he is very good in the ring still, which I was quite surprised by. Um, but the one thing that there was a botch at the end of the match, which I'll come on to in a second. But overall, I thought it was excellent. So, uh, yeah, the, the promo was good. Uh, one thing that did look odd was was Eli Drake. Uh, I always pick out these really odd, random view, you know, things that I notice. But when he's got longer hair, he looks odd. He needs to get his hair cut. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the match. Uh, you know, some of the things in there were great. You know, LAX's work is, is always top-notch anyway. Did some nice um, double-team stuff. But the, the one thing I didn't like about Steiner's work rate in there is that his kicks looked very, very weak. Um, when he was stomping on people and those kind of things, it didn't look like he was putting it. It looked like he was pulling the shots, which I know they are. And, and it's a minor criticism, but, uh, you know, it did look like he was actually trying that hard. I don't know if that you picked up on that at all. Or... Um, I mean, I didn't think too much of it. I wanted to ask you, what was the botch? What, what botch? Because I don't, I don't recall the botch. Which botch were you referring to? Yeah, so it was the very end of the match where Eli Drake did, I can't remember what the move was off, he did a counter mid-air, didn't he, um, to win the match. And it, uh, I think it was uh, Ortiz was trying to get back in the ring uh, because he, he originally had Eli Drake up on his shoulders and Santana was going over the top and uh, uh, Eli Drake countered it into, I don't know, a gravy train in, in midair or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the move was. Um, but then Ortiz was trying to, no, not Ortiz, yeah, Ortiz was trying to break it up and Steiner was holding him back so he couldn't break up the pin. But when you watch it again, Steiner didn't make it over in time. So he was flailing as if he was being dragged back. There's actually no one holding him. So it, it's it just something I noticed. And, I, and when they showed the replay, I, I noticed it again. And Steiner got over eventually, but he, he was just a few seconds off. Oh, so, right. he, yeah. so, so, so he was basically, you know, try, trying to get, pretending he was being dragged back by Steiner, even though Steiner wasn't there. So it was just a, a little thing that I noticed. But it didn't take away from the fact that it was a really entertaining match. And, um, you know, at, at the end of it, uh, the, the, you know, another great promo by Drake as well. I thought, you know, the one, and we'll get into the promo, but the one spot where it was scary in this match was when Steiner hit the the belly to belly off the turnbuckle to Santana. I mean that, and and we we've seen. I mean, if you follow some of Steiner's matches, um, sometimes when he hits those suplexes, I don't want to say he's unsafe, but he kind of hits them recklessly. Where the guy, I mean, I don't know, maybe if it's the person taking the move, but if they don't. You know, they're just kind of just a minute away of just landing straight on their neck. And we've mm-hmm. seen with the with the one that he did in this match, you know. So that was just one thing. Uh, you know, hopefully in the future, you know, they can be careful with those type of things. But the thing that I like the most, too, when we're seeing with Steiner is he's giving the faces um, offense. Because we see a lot of times when you get some of these old timers who wrestle in matches you know, the the other guy's got to oversell for the old timer and the old timer doesn't sell much. But, you know, Steiner was tossed out the ring and, you know, taking moves and kicks. And I like that. So, mm. but yeah, this was a great title defense. 
On that move that you just you referenced there as well, the other thing that I noticed about it was that the, the commentators also picked up on it and, uh, you know, really sold it well. And that, that was just a highlight once again, how good Don Callis was you know, during the whole match, outside the whole show. So, uh, yeah, very good. So, yeah, so obviously we had Eli Drake, you know, who could work a crowd. He's the best, best guy on the mic, I think, uh, in impact at the moment and for some time. Uh, but, yeah, once again, you know, he did a great promo and it really kind of... Um, you know, led to the, the stare down at the very end of the match. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You know, you got Eli Drake and like hinting about cashing in his world title shot. And which, I mean, I don't know if that's something that we're going to get soon or if that's just, he's just kind of just putting it out there. Um, I'd like to, for him to hold on to the briefcase a little bit longer. You know, it's, he's tag team champion right now. So I don't think he should be going for the world title. I really want to see what him and Steiner can do in the tag division because I think with Drake being tag champ, that elevates the belts since, you know, former world champion and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, obviously it brings out Austin Aries who you know, is putting over the grand title as a, being a world title and talking about he's going to get the other world title. And, you know, I know um, and uh, I've kind of, you know, BQ's poked fun at me about, you know, my me being an assist, insisting that the grand title is still a thing. But, I mean, we see Austin Aries coming out with it and it being recognized. So it's hard for me to believe that it doesn't mean much. Otherwise, you know, when they want to scrap a belt, you don't see that belt. They don't announce it or anything. And there was times where Josh wasn't acknowledging it until Austin Aries acknowledged it. But anyways, back to it, um, you know, you just, you know, their interaction. And these are the two guys I really think, you know, and I know uh, Eli's contract is uh, coming up in May, but hopefully if he stays on board, these are two guys you can really build around. And I mean, I know right now it might seem odd since both are heels or, you know, with Austin Aries transitioning into heel. But these are two um, faces, you know, as far as with the males that, you can build around so and I'm, I'm all on board for another Eli Drake Austin Aries feud something long and extended yeah the, the first time around it did seem you know quite rushed and they moved on to other things because of uh, the feast and fire but yeah uh, absolutely if, if Pentagon doesn't you know stick around for whatever reason I, I could see those two going again I'd quite enjoy it so yes yeah, so, so that was it you know uh, obviously Pentagon was out there as well uh, does he talk English at all or American or British whatever you want to call it does, does he does he speak uh or is it just Spanish that he he comes he, he promos in? No, I think he could speak enough. I I don't know if it's broken. I mean, you know, for those of you who follow his work in um, Lucha Underground, maybe you guys can elaborate more, listeners. Um, but it seems like he knows a little bit, you know, uh, enough, I guess, because you know they gave him a mic. So, I mean, you know, not if I had to compare, he probably doesn't know as much as Phantasma. But once again, like I said, I'm not too familiar with him. But, yeah, having him come out, you know, I thought that was cool. And then, obviously, we get the attack where they, the heels attack Ares and Pentagon. And then Pentagon and Ares get the upper hand on Eli and Steiner. And then they have their face off. So, you know, just interesting all around, man. I'm interested to see what happens next. I'm sure we're going to get a rematch between Pentagon and Austin Ares. Um, this gives me an opportunity to really get to know who pentagon is because fortunately i only follow impact so then putting the belt on him and uh, let me ask you what, what are your thoughts on, on impact putting the world title on pentagon yeah um, good question um to answer it i i don't know why they did it i don't know if they did it to, to please the fans to get some internet buzz whether they've got any long-term plans i'm not sure but i think for all of those reasons i don't think it's a bad idea at all now obviously you know something stupid is going to be happening now and, and he'll leave next week <laughs> do something <laughs> like that and leave him in the lurk but yeah i i think that it created some buzz around the product. There's already buzz around Impact. And, and, and I see it because I read a lot, you know, of the dirt sheets and see people commenting on Impact articles saying, oh, they're about to die, they're losing viewers, they're losing roster, those kind of things. But in the last two months, two, three months, there's been some real positive vibe, even for the people who historically have slated Impact. And, and even this was met with that same buzz. So I, I think they're doing good stuff. Um, <sighs> I kind of wish it had been more of a build. I know it couldn't be helped because of the Alberta situation, but, you know, 
I, I have no problem with it. And as I've yet to see him in the ring, other than, you know, at the, the pay-per-view, you know, I really want to see what he can do. And I'd like to see him get a few good title defences. And it doesn't have to be against the top guys. Uh, you know, it could be against anyone. But I, I just want to see more in the ring and, and a bit more character. Because if, if you're the top guy, you know, I, I don't think it's a, it's a good look, you know, for a company, you know, such as WWE has, uh, you know, Brock Lesnar and he's not on the show. So if you're going to do it, put the belt on someone, they have to be on the show and, and they've got to show a bit of character. So, yeah, I'm all for it. I mean, what, what do you feel about it? I don't have too much of a problem with it. I just think they need to use this opportunity where whenever they decide to have him drop the title, I think if they really want to pull the trigger, it's time to pull the trigger on Johnny Impact. I mean, I know he has his feud with uh, Congo Kong going on, but mainly where I'm just going with it is have him drop the title to somebody, probably not Eli or not Austin Aries, give someone else kind of a chance. Because, you know, obviously... If you did, if you were to put the belt back on Eli, the hat, you know, who else is he going to feud with? At least when, if you put it on somebody new, you know, you can create some new challengers in the meantime, if, if I'm making much sense. Yeah, yeah. The, the only person I think really fits that bill other than Johnny Mundo is, is Moose, isn't it? Um, everyone else has had a chance or had a run with it recently. And there's no one else in that upper echelon. I suppose you could argue Brian Cage. But once again, you know, has he showcased enough at the moment to be in that top position? And do you annoy someone like Moose, who, you know, who has put in the groundwork, has gone over to Japan for the company, you know, who, who's held the mid title, you know, all these kind of things. So you, you'd like to think that guy's going to be Moose if it's going to be anyone. I, over Johnny Impact, but we'll see. That's the beauty of uh, of wrestling. You never know what's going to happen unless you read spoilers. <laughs> All right. Uh, unless there's anything else, Ro, uh, is that us for the week? Yeah, just a quick uh, rundown. I mean, we also got a promo early, uh, earlier to mid-show about Slammiversary. That's July 22nd. So you think about, you know, we're closing in on the end of April and then all the way to July. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of excellent things happening leading up to the build to Slammiversary. So that's something to look out for. And then just a quick rundown again. I know you had mentioned some of the card, but just for our listeners, we're getting my um, uh, X-Division title match, which is um, Matt Seidel defending the X-Division championship against Taji Ishimori. Then obviously we get the new tag team of KM Afala Ba. And then we're getting the triple threat, as you mentioned. I mean, not triple threat, six man. Drago, Phantasma, and Aerostar versus DJZ, Desmond Xavier, Andrew Everett. We get a rematch of Redemption, which is Taya Valkyrie versus Kiera Hogan. I kind of have an idea how that's going to go. <laughs> and then, uh, as well as uh, Rosemary versus Sue Young, which that I'm really intrigued. I I wouldn't be surprised if that's the main event. I could totally see that being the main event. But yeah, that's our rundown for next week's show. Looking forward to it. And as you say, that is going to be a great match. And it's a shame, really, that that's the kind of match you could have on pay-per-view without the belt being involved. You know, we talk about, you know, filling up a card. That is an absolutely acceptable, you know, pay-per-view match, isn't it? So, and we're getting it on free TV, so you can't argue with that. All right, listeners, hit the subscribe, give us a like, give us a dislike, and drop us some comments. Uh, I'm your host, Adam. Good night, Ro. Good night, Adam. Everybody take care.